Hello, you are welcome to Tazunomi Online Mathematics. I am Kako Fred. Today we are taking a lecture on trigonometry. We want to make it so simple so that we can easily understand. Now let's break it down. Trigonometry is just a branch of mathematics that deals or that study the relationship between side length one key point side length and angles of a triangle so these are the two key points if possible the three key points that we need we need to know that it deals with the relationship between the length of the side and that of the angles of a triangle so if i take a triangle the relationship between the side and the angle inclined at any corner, the relationship between them is what we are basically termed to be trig. Now, trigonometry is used in various fields. It's not only in mathematics, it's used in physics, uh, even in geography and all aspects. When we talk of trigonometry, the importance of it is we use it in surveying, how to survey the land level it is used to know the depth of the ocean you can ask yourself who knows how do we get the length or to know how deep a particular river or what an ocean is it's used in navigation it's also if it is used in navigation that is on the, the to find the course of uh, canoes or boats on the oceans we use it in uh, determining the height of a cliff how to find the, the height of a building. All those fields about engineering, trigonometry is being used in there. You can imagine how bridges are constructed, some are hanging in the sky. Those are all uh, aspects of trigonometry. So if you are talking about the length and that of the angles. Now, I want to uh, put it together, let's say before I summarize it. Now, this is a circle that have each quadrant being divided. The word trigonometry is a, a Greek word which is to talk of trigono meaning triangle. Whereas we have metron meaning measure. So measure of a triangle. So in measuring the side and angles. Trigonometry is measured in the anti-clockwise direction. So if I'm starting from here at zero, when I move to this, I have 90 degrees. When I move further, I have my 180 degrees. When I move further, I have my 270 degrees. And when I come back to my original point, then I have four, 360 degrees. So we have one, two, three, four patterns. So if I am moving from here, and I reach this place, then I want to connect this. You can see that this can have a parallel line here to my y-axis. This line can be parallel. And since it's perpendicular to the x-axis, I can form a triangle. So we are measuring in an angle. And each of the angle, whatever point I'll get, when I construct it, I will get a triangle. So that triangle is not scaling. It's not equilateral, it's not isosceles, but what? A right angle triangle. So all we'll be doing under trigonometry will be based on a right angle triangle. Alright. So if I take a triangle as in this form, of course my right angle is there. The angle produced at the origin. Let's take that to be theta. Now we know this Triangle have three sides which can be labeled. Now, if you want to label this, the side facing the angle, the side that is facing the angle, in this point, this side is facing the angle. So we call that side opposite. Meaning it is opposite to the angle. Now, the longer side, or better still, the side facing the right angle, this is the right angle. The side facing the angle 90 is called the hypotenuse. Then, of course, the, the side that is perpendicular to the opposite. 
the side that is perpendicular to the opposite is what we call the adjacent. Someone will say, okay, what if the triangle is in this form? The right angle is here. In this case now, I have my theta as the angle here. Where will the opposite be? You can bear with me that this side is facing the angle. So this will be our opposite. Now, this is the longer side facing the right angle box. So I have that to be hypotenuse. And of course, this side is perpendicular to the opposite. This is the opposite is perpendicular to this. So we have that as well. Adjacent. Alright, so I'll base on this. Any right angle triangle drawn, if the angle is being indicated, then you can be able to find your opposite adjacent and what? The hypotenuse. Alright. Now, with this, this will take us into if you find the ratio of any of the side, it gives what they call trigonometry ratios or trig functions. Now, there are six trigonometric functions. These are, we have sine, which is abbreviated as C in English, sine. Then we have cosine, which is also abbreviated to be cos. Then we have tangent, which is also called the tan. These are the three basic trig functions or trig ratios. There are six ratios, but these are the basic. The remaining three is just the reciprocal of the first three. So if I have here to be this is cosecant. So that is the reciprocal of sine. Then I have second, which is abbreviated to be what? Sec is the reciprocal of cosine. Then I have cotangent, which is called cot. So we know reciprocal simply means if I have A, if I'm asked to find the reciprocal of A, we know every number has one as its denominator. So this is the denominator in there. If I'm asked to find the reciprocal, meaning I'm to flip the fraction. This is a fraction. I'm to flip it, meaning let the one go up and let the a come down. That is the flipping. All right. So if I have sine and I'm asked to find the reciprocal, meaning I'm flipping it to get cosecant. All right. Now, these functions are with the angle. So these functions are with the angle. So I have sine theta cos theta tan theta cosecant theta second theta and what? Cotangent what? Theta. If I am taking sine as in sine theta out here, the sine is always the opposite side over the hypotenuse. Sine, sine theta of any right angle triangle. If I take whether the angle is here or here, it is always a ratio of the opposite side over the hypotenuse. So if I'm taking the first letter of all of them, you will see it will be, if I take a triangle, so if I put S here, which will be sine, I can put opposite here and put A here. So sine equals to opposite over hypotenuse and that can translate into acronym so so if i have so in my mind i know s stands for sine o stands for opposite h stands for what our hypotenuse so so we mean the sine angle the function sine all right let me clear this then if i take cos theta the cos is also a ratio of the size. So that is going to be the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So for cos, 
which is the cosine, is just the cos of the angle is the ratio of the adjacent side of the triangle over the hypotenuse. So if I want to take the triangle this way, putting C here, A stands for adjacent and H stands for hypotenuse. It will give me the acronym CAH. So K or K, you know, how you want to put it, it could be K or K, right? So it means if I say K, I am saying cos of the angle equals to the adjacent side over the hypotenuse side. All right, let's take the next one, which will be tan theta. That one is a ratio of the opposite side over the adjacent side. So if you want to put it in a pictorial form, so T, O for opposite, then A for adjacent. In acronym, you have T, O, A. Some will say two. Okay? Two. All right. So it can see that so ka tua that we have been hearing. So ka tua as an abbreviation or acronym stand for the trigonometry ratios or functions. So if I say so ka tua, I am talking about the sine of the angle which is opposite of a hypotenuse. If I say ka, I am referring to the adjacent, the cos of the angle as a ratio of adjacent over hypotenuse. If I mention tua or tua, I am referring to the tan of the angle, which is the ratio of opposite side over the adjacent. So this is basically all that trigonometry is all about. Whether you move into the application to find the elevation, angle of depression, everything you be calculating is based on these ratios. It is always so katua. No matter how, whether the triangle is combined as in extending this to be like this, the moment I know one is a right angle triangle and this is also a right angle triangle, I can find any of this side to produce the rest. So all we need under this is so katua as the ratio or the function. When we go further, we talk about the remaining three, which is the, the flipping, which is, I think, the reciprocal. When we get into that, then we easily find what we are looking for. So if I have a question, I have a question like this, and I'm asked to find find the angle mark theta. We are asked to find the angle mark theta. All right. Now, if this is given to you and an angle is involved, imagine the angle is not involved, and I'm asked to find x. We can easily go into our Pythagorean theorem where we use hypotenuse square equals to the sum of the square of the other two sides. But the moment there is an angle involved, we need to find out which of the trig ratios can come to play in this. Obviously, the angle is in there. So I am going to find out the side the angle is opposite to. This is the opposite. I don't have any value here. I don't need any dimension. So it means I am not interested in this side. Even though I can use Pythagoras theorem to find here and be interested in it, but I have not been given. So I will look at opposite is out. I have adjacent and I have what? Hypotenuse. Between our so katua, which of the ratios am I going to use? Obviously, opposite is not here. So you can see, opposite, opposite. I need them before I can find sine and what? Tua. But if I take ka, it doesn't have anything to do with opposite. So I can say cos of the angle is equal to the ka, which is what? Adjacent. 
5 over hypotenuse, which is what? 13. So this, I find the value of this. Let's see. Now, if this is cos, this is the angle I'm looking for. We know if I have 4x equals to 9, and I'm looking for x, I have to divide by the coefficient 4. So if I divide it cancel, then it will shift to this place. Alright. We also learn that if I have uh, 1 over 4, is the same as 4 exponent minus 1. Okay. So it means I need to collect the cos. So I am going to divide both sides by cos. If I put cos here, it will cancel. If I send it to this place, it becomes a fraction. So I can still make it to be times 1 over cos. Since I'm dividing, if I divide, it becomes like this. And this 1 over this could be cos inverse. So instead of saying divide both sides by uh, cos, you will really say that theta equals to cos inverse of 5 over 13. And you'll be asking yourself, how am I going to find the cos inverse? You can find that on your calculator. So if you have the calculator, you go to shift, then you press the cos, you can see on the calculator, then press the fa uh, fraction key, then key in 5 over 13. When you press it, you will get an answer. Let's see what the calculator will give us. So with the calculator, we are going to have 22.6199. If I want to approximate this to the nearest whole number, it becomes 23 degrees. Measurement in trigonometry is either in degrees or in radiant. By in radiant, you find uh, an episode for that. So you can see that finding the missing side of any right angle triangle using trig ratios is not a problem. You can also be asked to find the angle as we get this, or you could be given the angle and you will be asked to find the missing side. Pretty simple, right? Alright, we will take more questions in the next episode. I believe you follow the concept so that the ideas in this video can help us solve questions in the videos to come. Thank you very much for watching. Please share this video with your colleagues. Share it with yourself with your colleagues and those who think may need it. Maybe you have finished everything we can do with trigonometry. Give it to somebody who may need it and God will bless you. Bye-bye.